Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, can I firstly thank Mr. Rayban Hosh, CEO, Messe Berlin, for inviting me here to PopCom. I am also particularly honored of the presence today of Mr. Bernd Neumann, Minister of State to the Federal Chancellor, Mr. Niyad Gül, Minister of Culture and Tourism of the Turkish Republic, and Mr. Harold Wolf, the Mayor of Berlin, Senator for Economics, Technology and Women's Issues. I hope that everyone here has a successful and profitable convention. I am here to talk to you today in my role as President of CSAC, the International Association for Authors Collecting Societies. I am honoured to have been asked to be the President of CSAC. It is a post I accepted without hesitation because I am a fierce supporter of collective rights management. The worldwide network of societies has been of huge value to me and my brothers throughout our careers. When we songwriters write music, we are not just creating a product. We create something which is an extension of ourselves. Yes, we exercise professional judgment to create the best piece of work we can, but it will be full of our personalities, full of our, our own personalities, and full of our ideas, whether we spend agonizing hours searching for that perfect phrase. Whether it comes out in five minutes, a fooling around, with a piano or a guitar. Music writers create. They give unheard things shape, substance, and voice. This is a process shared by all creative artists. But sometimes, the rest of the world just thinks this is more stuff for them to consume. And they even have a name for it. It's called intellectual property. I have never thought of my work as intellectual property. When I started writing with my brothers in the 1960s, we were embarking on a voyage of discovery with no idea where our ideas and playing would eventually take us. We music because that is who we were. That is how we needed to live our lives. The fact that we created intellectual property was a byproduct of the fact that we had an overwhelming need to write and perform together. We did not sit down and say, right boys, time to work on a new piece of intellectual property. <laughs> we wrote them for the fun and excitement of the projects, for the challenge of creating new works for different singers. We wrote them because that is what we do. This is what all creators do. We find ourselves at a time and a place where our very nature takes over. This is the space where author societies become so special to all of us who hope to spend our lives doing what we love. Throughout the life of copyright of those works we create, author societies are there trying to collect on behalf of their members a fair recompense for their work. They continue to do this throughout our lives, not just at the moment of our first hit, not at the moment where we receive our first advance. For us, record companies can come and go. But the fact that the Collection Society Network is out there working on our behalf provides the possibility of a space in which to work. But at the moment, this space is under attack. And bizarrely, it is under attack by the very institution which should be encouraging collective rights management and cultural diversity in a digital age. That is the European Union Commission. As most of you will be aware, the Commission reached a decision in the so-called CSAC case. Of particular importance, it accused the society of using concerted practice to place restrictions on multi-territorial licensing in the fields of satellite, cable and internet transmission. According to the Commission, this was done by the societies to prevent competition between societies. The decision does not ban reciprocal arrangements on a bilateral basis, but it forbids societies from taking, or talking I should say together, on a multilateral basis. This is obviously a stupid and and quite daft 
makes international trade in music licensing even more difficult than before. It also accuses the societies of being anti-competitive in following the CSAC model. Contract with regard to membership, exclusivity and territoriality in their, in their reciprocal agreements. And now this all sounds very serious until you actually examine the reality on the ground. Put simply, there are no clauses on membership or exclusivity in the CSAC model contract. They were removed a long time ago. So why are they bothering with this at all? Much more difficult, though. Much more difficult, however, is the question of territory. The Commission is questioning the long-standing arrangements which enable users to acquire a blanket license for the world's repertoire. This has enabled users to go to a one-stop shop for the use of copyright music and provide use or us or provide the, us the writers of that music with fair remuneration. Clearly, we all know that in a digital age, or in a di the digital world where the new technological t technologies are not interested in borders, new answers for multi-territorial licensing have to be found. Members of CSAC, we're in the process of moving this work ahead, with the full knowledge of the Commission. But this work has been brought to a standstill by the Commission's actions since the societies again face being accused of concerted practice. Bizarrely, the decision also has the effect of blocking the licensing of new digital services. It has destroyed the current system of multi-territorial licenses and has forbidden the societies to discuss any new way forward. There is a perfectly good and practical reason that each bilateral reciprocal agreement has territorial restrictions. It has nothing whatever to do with concerted practices. It is at this point that the societies are pushed into competing by a race to the bottom on royalty value. This would do immeasurable harm to the writer community. DG Competition may think it a good idea, but no other branch of the Commission wishes to see this outcome. Perhaps they should try a bit of joined up government. At this point, I am glad to say that CSAC intends to go to the European courts to have this flawed decision annulled and also order the Commission to bear the costs of this sorry exercise. In early July, I went to Brussels with a delegation of fellow music writers to try and persuade the Commission not to carry on down this fruitless path. We were listened to politely and then assured that there would be nothing in the decision to the detriment of songwriters and composers. I now feel that we were lied to at that meeting, and worse, the Commission put out its own press briefing implying that we agreed with their position. This is not the truth. I was told a story recently about a family of cheesemakers in Italy. For hundreds of years they made their cheese and formed it on a wooden table. Then, one day, they were told that the EU requires them to use a stainless steel table. They tried this, but the cheese did not taste the same. So they gave up cheese making altogether. It is the narrow-minded, dogmatic approach that has been taken in this affair which is so depressing. We, the authors, want to work with anyone to improve licensing regimes across Europe. It is how we earn our living. It is not a good idea to use the blunt instrument of competition law to deal with organisations which are there for a public purpose. Collection societies are collectives of individual creators. They are not Microsoft or Vodafone. Earlier this year, the Irish had a referendum on the EU constitution, and they rejected it. My guess is that if a referendum was held across Europe, a lot of people would reject it as well. Not because they are against any idea of European unity, but because they usually see the Commission behaving in an unhelpful and dogmatic fashion, just like the Italian cheesemakers. We music writers resent the thoughtless way we have been treated over the past couple of years. I implore the Commission to reopen talks, use some common sense, 
Take away the sledgehammer of competition law and let us work together to achieve your aim of a growing European digital economy and, at the same time, enable authors to have a vehicle of their choice to help them earn a living. Thank you.